The Intelligence Explosion, Nick Bostrom on the Future of AI. Artificial intelligence, AI, is a new invention that is taking the world of technology by storm, and unlike its predecessors, AI is exploding all frontiers of conventionality in knowledge and expertise. It's rapidly spreading its tentacles to all facets of world economies in an onslaught that experts have come to refer to as the intelligence explosion, and as a scholar, Nick Bostrom would admit, all the plausible paths to a really great future involve the development of machine superintelligence at some point. As we move through the advancement of artificial intelligence in this video, let's see what Oxford University professor Nick Bostrom has to say considering the future of AI. Keep watching. AI is an emerging field that has often been referred to as weak AI due to its limitations. However, the future of artificial intelligence now more than ever depends on the development of robust AI. It is believed that with time, AI will outperform humans in all cognitive tasks. This will definitely have its positive and negative consequences. Evolution of AI Before delving into the future of AI, it is crucial to understand what artificial intelligence is and the kind of progress it has made in the last couple of years. Artificial intelligence is the ability of machines or human-controlled robots to perform tasks associated with intelligence. Therefore, AI is a field of study with an objective of creating intelligent machines that, if not mimic, then give a semblance of human behavior. Based off their capacities, AI has been divided into three categories. 1. Narrow AI Narrow AIs are AIs that are capable of performing specific tasks intelligently. This AI is currently in a stage of restraint. 2. AGI or General AI Artificial general intelligence refers to machines that can mimic human intelligence. 3. Super AI. Super AI refers to self-aware AI with cognitive abilities almost similar if not superior to humans. It is the point at which intelligent machines can perform any task that a human can. 10 years ago, what did the future of AI look like? Even before the phrase was coined, artificial intelligence AI, has aroused the sense of dread and anticipation as humans have contemplated developing machines in their image. Most of us were unaware that AI had been in existence for quite some time because of the misconception that intelligent machines must be humanoid. While successes in surpassing humans sometimes in human activities such as chess and translation make headlines, AI has been a part of the industrial arsenal since the 1980s. It had been used for circuit board investigation and credit card fraud detection, production rule or expert systems. Meanwhile, ML methodologies such as genetic algorithms have been used for a long time to solve difficult scheduling problems, and neural networks have been used not only to model and comprehend human learning, but also for basic industrial control and monitoring. In the 1990s, probabilistic and Bayesian methods revolutionized machine learning, paving the way for some of the most prevalent AI technologies, such as searching through massive datasets. This search capacity included performing semantic analysis on unprocessed text, allowing web users to locate the desired content among billions of web pages by entering a few keywords. In a YouTube video, an Oxford scholar is seen commenting on the positive probability of the existence of artificial intelligence in the 21st century. I'm Nick Bostrom. I am a professor at Oxford University where I run the Future of Humanity Institute with the unusual mandate of trying to think carefully about the really big picture questions for humanity and the future of Earth originating intelligent life. In this century probably, we will be building this hugely consequential thing which is the first general intelligence that will be smarter than humans. This involves an enormous responsibility. This is like maybe the most important thing that our species will ever have done on this planet, giving birth to this new level of intellect. Nick believes that if the human mind can conceive something as complex as artificial intelligence, then it is worth so much more and can do much more than just creating AI. In fact, AI can be instrumental in transforming systems and processes rather than just changing the world in a linear pattern. It has been a big focus of mine really since my teenage years. It always seemed that if you look around and ask what accounts for why the world is the way it is, our human world, a lot of it is because we humans have made it so. We have invented all kinds of technologies, and so all these things, whether it's jet planes or art or political systems, have come into the world through the birth canal of the human brain. That immediately made it plausible to me that if you could change that channel creating artificial brains, 
then you would change the thing that is changing the world. Humans creating artificial intelligence will become AIs themselves. Professor Nick has observed a causal effect and relationship that could result from the specialization and concentration of a single mind on consistently building AI bots. He believes soon a loop will be reached in their minds and inventors could become bots. I think we have this notion of what's smart and what's dumb, whereas I think there is actually a huge amount of space above us between our level of intelligence and God's. And once you go beyond human, you get this feedback loop where the brains doing the AI research will become AIs themselves. Therefore, I think there is a significant chance that we'll have an intelligence explosion, so that within a short period, we go from something that was only moderately affecting the world to something that completely transforms the world. More than just AI, super intelligence. Inventors worldwide are in a hurry, not just to create weak or narrow AIs, but something capable of the systemic transformation the world dreams about. All the things we could imagine human intelligence being useful for are pretty much everything. Artificial intelligence could be useful as well if it just became more advanced. Like diseases, pollution, or poverty, we would have vastly better tools for dealing with issues. Professor Nick says, If you had super intelligence, you could help develop better clean energy technologies or medicines. So all the plausible paths to a great future involve the development of machine superintelligence at some point. However, this transformation, according to the professor, cannot come about without some side effects or what we'd like to call necessary evil. There are, I think, existential risks connected with the transition to the machine intelligence era, and the most obvious being the possibility of underlying superintelligence that then overrides the Earth, human civilizations, with its own value structures. Another big class of failures would be if this technology were used for destructive purposes. Then I think there is a third dimension that has received less attention so far, which is how good the outcome is for the AI stem cells. If we're going to construct digital minds that are maybe conscious or have moral status of various degrees, he says, then how can we ensure that they are treated well? If you think about it, most of us would acknowledge that various non-human animals have degrees of moral status even something as simple as a humble lab mouse. At that point, it becomes an active question of whether we have obligations to the AIs not to just make sure we don't misuse AIs against one another or protect ourselves from the AI, but also make sure we do what we ought to do with respect to the AIs. Looking at a brighter end, humans can only reap the dividends of artificial intelligence if they don't abuse or misuse it before such a time arrives. If we succeed at that and things go well, then we can imagine living lives, way beyond anything that is possible now. This is why there has been so much interest in AI in recent years, because it does look like it could be this fourth ground on which the future depends. So, on the one hand, it does look from this kind of slightly abstract point of view that we might develop in the not-too-distant future greater than human AI and it could change everything. The professor goes on. On the other hand, it seems kind of rather incredible that this world that we've known for our whole lives that that will be a plausible scenario in which that changes radically in our lifetime. And we become, I don't know, some sort of semi-mortal uploaded creatures with Jupiter-sized minds. Like, is it? I actually take that seriously. Like, it seems to go against day-to-day -day lived experience. So keeping both of those in mind creates this kind of interesting tension between two different ways of thinking about the world. I think rather than just eliminate one of them, just keep them both there and struggle with that tension. Thanks for watching till the end. What do you think about Professor Nick's claim? Do you think he is exaggerating? Let us know in the comment section below. You can like and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to keep seeing more videos like this.